Lions TV, this is your post-match analysis video for yesterday's nil-nil draw against Watford at the Den. As a great man once said, football is a funny old game. And I've been hammered recently for being negative. Last night I was positive and I felt the flip side of that. How can you say this was good? Let's go through the facts. Do I think last night was a brilliant performance? No. Do I still want Gary Rowett to leave the club? Yes. Do I think we're going to score a lot of goals anytime soon? Definitely not. But... In this video, I'm going to tell you why I think last night was a good performance and a step in the right direction. Let's start out, as always, by taking a look at the 11 that the gaffer picked to start the match. So two changes were made from our last league game, a 1-0 win at Huddersfield. It was Bolkowski in goal. Free center ass Ryan Leonard, who again was outstanding yesterday, in my opinion. Jake Cooper and Sean Hutchinson. It was a central midfield pairing of Ryan Woods and Kong Beef come straight in to make his debut for the Lions. Danny McNamara, right wing back. Scott Malone, left wing back. And then up front, sort of Ben Thompson in behind, Ken Zahor and Jeb Wallace. It was sort of Zahor up front. He was running channel Zahor as well. And then you've got Thompson and Jed just buzzing around like Bumblebees going wherever they felt like they did want to do on a pitch. At points, you had them both on the left, as I said last night. One on the left, one on the right. Jed spent a lot of time on the left. Tomo was all over the pitch. And I definitely think, just uh, why it's fresh in my memory, that Tomo's position definitely is one of those forward-thinking players. I don't think he's got the, the distribution to play in that too. Um, and I'd like to see another centre-half come in and Ryan Leonard go back in and part of corn beef. Right, let's get into the game. Let's start out by saying before the game, the pitch was atrocious. Uh, but that, honestly, I feel that played into our hands last night. Watford spent six years in the Premier League. They got players, as Gary Rowett rightly said, in Saar that have been bid £40 million for recently. Didn't look like a £40 million player last night, but none of them did. The conditions were atrocious, horrendous. I don't think any of them were wearing blades or moulds, but they should have gone for old school, long uh, studs. I don't think you can wear metal studs in this day and age, but I definitely say I would have looked at it if it was possible because the pitch is shot to bits. The club know the pitch is shot to bits as well, by the way. And the, reg the regen, the revamp on the pitch was supposed to happen in the summer, just gone, obviously, and it couldn't happen because of the shortened um, summer break, if there was a summer break at all due to COVID. So I believe that's going to happen at the end of this season if Boris lets us out to play ever. So the game, we started well. It was intense. First five minutes of a lot of games recently, I'm in Huddersfield, it's up in the air, it's bobbling around, and it's just scrapping, which is to be expected from both sides. That's not just from us. So once we got into the game, I felt we was pressing them well. I felt we was intense. I felt we was compact. I felt we was giving everything we had for the calls. As I said, I think the pitch definitely suited us. So it wasn't going to be a, a you know, let's have it right. What for a good side? They popped the ball around, and they wasn't allowed to do that last night. They wasn't able to do it. So I felt we was a better side for, for long periods of the first half. Sort of nothing missed the first 10 minutes. Then we was on top. Then they started to come back into it. And at this point... Corn Beef hadn't really done a lot, and I was watching out for him. He's very slight, by the way, and he's very similar in stature and the way he travels to Ben Thompson. As it was raining, everyone's hair looked black, so I was, I was confused at points who was Ben Thompson and who was Corn Beef. But I noticed who Corn Beef was and reassured myself that what I thought he was a Millwall player is when he absolutely half someone, nearly, nearly decapitates the Watford player, absolutely smears him, and I loved it. I loved, fucking loved it. He could have got sent off. He could have got sent off, but he gets a yellow card. And from that moment on, Corn Beef sort of stamped his arrival on the game. And Watford, at that point, didn't look like they fancied it after that, really, until we sat back and last 10 minutes in injury time. So, well done, Corn. That's exactly what we expect from you, Nick. Give me a lift. Give everyone in the live stream a lift. By the way, live stream, we broke our record last night. 943 people consecutive in the live stream. It's had 8,000 views as well. So, crack on with our live streams. We'll be going again on Saturday. But yeah, getting back to the game last night, Corn Beef half someone, and that's exactly what I said we were missing. He come in, fuck off. I and the geezer out, the geezer was down in bits, didn't want to know, and he just give our players a little, all right, here we go, then we'll have a bit now. And Watford went, fuck that, and didn't want to know. Then we started getting to the game, and we have good chances. And for those that say we can't score goals, we're never going to score a lot of goals in the championship. I don't believe, not this season. I'll get on to why after when I've, when I've assessed the game. So... Cooper's unlucky. I don't know what he's doing up there. He, 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 the first header, he comes off the post. I think Thompson thinks he's going in and doesn't want to poach it off, off Cooper. If he just follows in himself, I think he could have got that, maybe. But it comes back off the post. It takes Thompson by surprise and he can't latch onto the rebound. When Cooper heads it, it looks like it's going wide and it bounces and sort of cuts in at the last minute. Again, I don't know if the pitch had played its part in that. But I don't know what Cooper was doing up there, but he, he, he was up there and he hits the post. Not long after, of course, is this very contentious decision where... Again, I've, I've, I've said it, and I will cover this, by the way, in the next end debate, because I think we should have VAR in the championship. Uh, I don't care that we have to stop the game. I don't care that it sanitises football. I care about our club and standing in the division, and we've had so many 
bad decisions. I'm actually going to cover all the bad decisions we've had this season. Blackburn away, free penalties. Swansea away, should have had penalties. That potentially should have been given. First off, I thought it was a goal. I thought there's no way it's offside. It's a brilliant finish from Cooper. You see him on the replay. He's hanging off the back of the defender, looking at the defender. And as he kick goes, drops his shoulder. Powerful header. Gets disallowed. It's bang on half time. And it would have been a brilliant, brilliant moment in the game for us. But... It was disallowed. As I said, first off, I thought it was a goal. I've looked back, looked back, looked back. I'll put a picture on the screen now. It's fucking tight, isn't it? And in the rules of the game and VAR in this day and age, you could probably argue that Cooper's right bollock and his right shin are offside. Um, however, there is no VAR in the championship. So in, in a minute, that's a little bit of a non-argument. And I would say 50-50 at home, packed in. He probably doesn't put his flag up for that. However, as we know... I was going to say, as we know and love, we definitely don't love. As we've learned over the years, and especially in this last season, very bad decisions. We never get any sort of 50-50. And it's not saying it's worth crying about because it happens and it's going to continue to happen. So we go in half time and against a team that's, as I said, spent six years in the Premier League, got millions of pounds worth of talent on the pitch, new manager is doing well, five wins in six. I think it's a good I think it's a good display. They had their little spell towards the end of the first half, Bart Balkowski with a brilliant save with his legs. At first, I thought the guy hadn't caught hold of it. Probably, but he did. Bart goes the wrong way, comes off his post. Of course, Corn Beef's held back there as well. Free kick into the box. Uh, flipped on. Sean Hutchinson, who I love as a defender. Hutch, but he's struggling with his footwork at the minute and he's passing. And he sort of makes a funny movement. He clips him on the knee. Goes through. It's Danny Mack. It's the post. Come out. We're lucky. We're riding up a bit there. The cross back in and Corn Beef's there to sort of get his body in the way and clear it off the line. I thought we had a very, very accomplished debut. It was a bit quiet first 10, 15, but after that, when he, when he got himself settled, and don't forget, it will take him time to settle in our side. thought we looked good. Half someone all over that, and then from that point on, clear one off the line the other end. In the second half, I saw him make some good passes and some nice distribution as well. So he's not going to be a Conor Mahoney. He's not going to be a Jed Wallace, but he's going to be a fucking workhorse, and that is what we need at the minute to stay in this division. So... Second half, again, scrappy, physical. I don't mind games if they're... They don't, I don't have to see a 4-0, a 4-4. I don't like nil nils. I do say that. It frustrates the fuck out of me, especially on live streams. I end up apologising to people for them not seeing any goals. But I enjoyed that last night. Maybe the wine and the cold Cronenbergs helped. Yes, definitely they did. But midweek streams, I'm enjoying them. And we always seem to turn up against the top teams from this division. I'm trying to think what I'm talking to. I'm stalling because I'm trying to think of chances of note that happened in the second half. And I can't really think of any for either side. Um, but look, it was good. It was competitive. We was in the game. We was getting involved. We give everything we got. And that's all we asked. And then, it, you know, for an input of energy, he brings on three subs. I will say this. At this point, people in the live stream are calling out for Matt Smith. And he's brought on Bavarsen. Now, I know why he's brought on Bavarsen, because he goes for legs in this situation. He goes for people that will run channels, hold the ball up and try and relieve the pressure. And by the way, that's exactly what John Danny Bavarsen did uh, in late in injury time. Uh, he's got his back to goal. Ball comes up to him. He wins the free kick, relieves the pressure. So I do know why Gary Rowett has done that. However, I will say this. Last night, no one was getting about the pitch. There was no mobility on the pitch. People were sliding all over the place. So I felt it could have suited us. Last 10, I would have left Zahor on, stuck him up top with Smith and just like pumping balls into the box. I know it's not pretty, but I'll get onto that after the game as well, what I think we need to do to survive in this division. Um, but yeah, Matt Smith, I've got to be honest, in a time where people keep saying we need a striker, okay? We're not going to buy another striker, I don't think, until we get someone out the door. Because don't forget, we've got Bradshaw, we've just given a new contract, which is... Questionable. John Daly with Arsenal, I don't think we'll get a new contract at the end of the season. And we've also got Matt Smith, of course, Ken Zahor on loan, Troy Parrott on loan. Uh, five strikers, okay? I don't think he's going to send Parrott back, although I would. Uh, and getting Matt Smith out the door, maybe, because he has no intention of playing Smith. So all I'm thinking is, if you can get Matt Smith out the door, who I feel would definitely have a, a, a lot to offer in League One, I definitely think he'd be a top scorer in League One still. You know, a, a step down slightly, yes. A slightly different ethic in League One. It's even less technical and more physical. So I don't want Matt Smith to lead the club. I think he's good to use as a utility player and bring him on the pitch as an impact player. But he's just not playing. He's just not playing. If we need to get someone out the door to get someone in, I'll get money. You get money for Smith. I, probably, I reckon you get quarter of a million for Smith around that, probably, for a League One club. I could be miles away. But for a League One club, I reckon they do well to get Matt Smith in for a quarter of a million. If the gaffer's not going to play him, then just get him out the door. Also... Para, I'd send him back because you know he's going to be on big wages coming from Spurs. Don't worry about his age or his experience. Let's just look at it from a wage perspective for us. So let's get back to the game. In the last ten minutes, we sat. Of course, we sat. You know, we had we give everything in the game and we run out of steam. 
and we, we was compact and we sat and that's why I brought on Sean Williams because what Willow will do is he'll get the ball, he'll hold it for as long as he can, he'll bring someone else in, he'll move and get it back off him and he'll just kill the momentum of the game. And there was real no shitty bum time, was there? I always say about shitty bum time. Last two league games now, no shitty bum time. So on reflection, I'm now going to tell you why I think it's a good result and a step in the right direction and why I called my video last night light at the end of a tunnel for Gary Rowett because let's look back, and I meant to do this but I forgot, let's look back to the team that we put out against Middlesbrough when I feel he's going horrendously wrong and Huddersfield at home. We're shipping goals, three at home to Bristol City, three at home to Huddersfield and two at home to Coventry. So we've come up against a better side last night and, and we, we've kept still, we've kept quiet, we've kept them out, we've stayed compact. And I think that that's a step in the right direction. I also think Danny Mack coming back to the club, I mean, if you look at the team we put out against Middlesbrough, I don't know what it was, but Zahor, we've extended his loan. We've got Danny Mack in the scene now. We've got Ben Thompson, who's, who's forced his way, by the way, because I got a good feeling he was on his way to Pompey before this transfer window was out, and I don't think he now is. Um, but as I said, he needs to play higher up the pitch just to get involved and get that Mia Wallace about. I thought Jeb Wallace battled hard last night, although without much reward on that pitch, it couldn't be as expected. And I thought him and Tom up front, battling in around Zahor, just gives us a little bit more up front. We're still lacking up front, and I'll get onto that in a minute again. But Danny Mack back in the team. Conor Mahoney now and Billy Mitchell close to fitness. I can see light at the end of the tunnel, Ryan Linder playing in his new position, called Beef now coming into the team. So I can see, I want to row it out, and I still do, okay? I haven't changed my mind yet, but it's a step in the right direction. I want to get row it out here. Now we've got these new players in, bringing players back to the club, and Gary Row has changed his, his ethics. And I'm going to say this for Row as well. I think it's took him a long time for it to soak in of, or for him to accept what he didn't want to soak in. I think Gary Row is watching this now, and I, not me, sorry. I think he's watching the team, and I think I think he's think, thinking, "What the fucking hell have I signed up for here?" I think he's it's dawned upon him, and he's realised that to succeed in this division this season, he's going to have to incorporate and implement a style of play and tactics and players that he doesn't want to play. And I think he probably thinks it's harming his reputation as a manager. I would argue if he does think that, wind your fucking neck in and, and get in line and realise where you are as a manager. Um, I'm not saying he thinks that, but if he does, and if he is watching, that one's for you, Gaffer. I think Gary Rout standing on the touchline thinking, I think he goes home at night and he probably rings the old woman and goes, oh, fucking Tomo, honestly. Oh, some of these players, uh, we're playing, it's, it's horrible to watch, it's ugly, I hate it, I want to pop, I want to play. But I think he's realised finally, as much as it pains him to stand there and watch what he's having to do for us to succeed in this division at the minute... He's working, so you've got to stick with it, Gaffer. And if you, I said ages ago, if Gary Rout wants to keep his job, there's only one way he can do it, and that is to bring in mill type type players, go compact, give everything we got, a little bit Neil Harris esque, and protect what we got, and keep bollock and bite. James Dawley on Instagram, friend of mine, also son of Mill legend Alan Dawley. Shout out to James because he hit the nail on the fucking head this morning on Instagram, and he said people need to understand, and this has dawned upon me as well. So for all the times I've fucking moaned about a nil-nil draw and we can't score goals, we're not going to score goals in this division. We're not going to win a game comprehensively until the end of the season. James said, what we've got to realise is where we are as a team and what we've got to do to get safe at the end of the season. And that is play defensive, play compact, give everything we got and win points ugly. And that is what we've got to do. Unfortunately, until the end of the season, it's not pretty. I don't want to cover nil-nil draws in live streams. It's no good for me. It's no good for anyone. We're not going to score a lot of goals this season. Full stop. End of story. I don't think we're going to... We'll probably go and beat fucking Cardiff 4-0 now on Saturday. But I don't think it's going to happen. And I think we've got to accept as a fan base, and if you do want Rowett in his job, I personally still don't, but if he can save it, then this is how we're going to do it. We're going to get Mill-type players in, Keith and Bell. We're going to have Leonard at the back, Barkowski, Hutchinson, Cooper. You know, we're going to get Murray Wallace back in at points. You're going to have Ben Thompson. You're going to have Billy Mitchell. You're going to have Danny Mack, if I haven't mentioned him already. These type of middle players, Jeb Wallace, giving everything. And it's not going to be pretty. And we're not going to score a lot of goals. We might have to defend for long periods. But if we get those type of middle players in, stay compact and give everything we've got, we just, just might survive, in my opinion. Another problem we've got is, a massive problem, is consistency. Now, this isn't even a Gary Rowett thing. This is a Neil Harris thing as well. We always perform against the better teams. Bournemouth away, better side. Brentford at home on a Saturday, better side. Of course, last night, Watford, good side in this division. I wasn't expecting a win last night. I wasn't even expecting a point. And don't be expecting a point or a win next week, of course, because we've got league leaders Norwich at home on a Tuesday. The ones that we need to be careful with, in my opinion, out of our next three games coming up now, isn't even Cardiff away, because we go away and we seem to do okay. We might scrape another draw Saturday. 
It's the Sheffield Wednesdays of this world. We've got Nick Saturday at home, Huddersfields of this world, the Rotherhams of this world at home. These are the teams we can't seem to find consistency with and, and, and getting results against. So we absolutely have to find some level of consistency. Now, as I said, two changes from the Huddersfield team. He brought in Zahor for Bavardson and he brought in Corn Beef for Sean Williams. Again, now, in my opinion, it's got to be the same team Saturday. Looking at that team, and I'm not criticising Woods, but I suppose I am criticising Woods. I still don't feel we offered a lot last night. I thought we did okay. I still wouldn't have him in the team. I try and get another centre-half in, and I put Leonard back in centre midfield. And I think, with that, with Billy Mitchell back fit then, and Conor Mahoney back fit then, we're pretty much there. Shout out to Mason Bennett last night. He's come on there. He, he ain't happy. He wants his shirt back. I feel the last two times he's come off the bench... I feel he's really give his all. So it's good. Competition for places. No one's safe. Gaffer, make a statement and make, make, make Ryan Woods aware that he's not safe. Although we both fucking know he is. Um, yeah, for me, we're, we're not far off now. We're looking a lot more like a middle side. We brought a lot more players into the fold, as I said, from where we was when I wanted him sacked at Middlesbrough because I couldn't see it changing. And maybe that's one error that I've made along the way is that I wanted him out and I didn't... I didn't incorporate and I didn't factor into my thinking that we are going to, of course, have a transfer window. And again, with his signings, he's learning. He hasn't gone for a Ryan Woods type player. He hasn't gone for a Mason Bennett type player who are players of reputations, who are talented players. But are they Millwall players? Will they dig in, snot blowing, gum showing, give everything in the trenches if need be? I'm not sure. He's learned this time. Corn beef all over him. Half in people. Love it, Corn. Well played, mate. So just before I finish, I will say again, consistency is the issue. And we need to find that level of consistency again. I'm not saying it's Rowett's fault because we had the same problem under Neil Harris with the, with the lower teams and we used, to, we used to turn up for the bigger teams. Maybe it's a Millwall mentality full stop, but we need to lose that. And at the minute, Gary Rowett is the manager. So unfortunately, the buck does stop with him. I was a little bit excited last night because I enjoyed watching my football club and I felt proud to see the way they was getting stuck in. It wasn't brilliant. It wasn't fantastic, but it's definitely a step in the right direction, in my opinion. Now, we need to continue this on Saturday away at Cardiff, which I think we might, but I'll get into that tomorrow in a pre-match prediction. Um... It's a Sheffield Wednesday game the following Saturday. This is the problem. And I'm not going to get too excited just yet because there could be an immediate lull. Yes, now it's 10 games without a win at home, but I didn't expect to win last night. And I don't expect one next Tuesday at home to run away leaders Norwich City either. So that's your lot for this post-match analysis. Happy birthday to my first-born son, Henry. 14 years a lion today. Happy birthday, boy, if you're watching. I doubt you are. You're too busy streaming on your own YouTube channel. But um, yeah, my son's birthday today, so I'd be pretty much wrong on me. So I didn't say happy birthday to him. I will be back tomorrow. It's my birthday tomorrow. I'll be back for a preview show, some fan score predictions, and then Friday night, we're going to go live. The first ever lineup 11 live. You're going to pick your best team for Cardiff with me. It's a democracy. We're going to vote together. Is that a democracy or is it the opposite to a democracy? I try to be clever. I'm jumbling my words. Fuck knows. I'll see you tomorrow. Please subscribe to Lions TV. Come on, you Lions.